Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and welcome to part 8 of building the Tamiya 1.6 scale Honda CRF 1000L motorbike. Uh, right, this one is the panels. Uh, most of the body panel with the seat and side fairings and the fuel tank and that sort of thing. Basically everything that's not already done with the front uh, mudguard there. Uh, and then it will just leave the handlebars to put on the end. So uh, yeah, I'll get on with this. Uh, as ever, I'll get some of the bits for the first bit, cut off the sprue, and uh, then get ready for the painting. So see you in a moment. Right, first up we've got the fuel tank. Now these bits, I've already glued in a couple of bits there. The bar needs to go through the middle and holds that together like that. This little bit just goes up in the middle there. All of this has to be painted one colour and then masked and then black around the edges. But the piece itself has to go right in the middle, uh, up there somewhere. I don't know exactly where. Where does that go? Uh, over the top of that. So pretty much up there somewhere. Uh, so, this is all obviously going to be highly visible. So, the camera back down again. I need to make sure this seam line here is as gone as I can make it. So, first up, I'm going to glue this together, uh, adding a little bit of glue to that. Getting it located together properly and then running some extra thin across the middle piece here. And that should seep through and out just a bit. It's going to add a little bit more. just to make sure. Then I need to sand that down before I prime it. Uh, actually, let's put that bit in there as well. Actually, no, I'm not going to put that in quite yet because I need to sand across the end there, which I can't do when that's sticking up through the top. So get that aside for now, put that aside for now. Now, all of this, I don't know how well that's coming out on the camera, but there is a definite visible seam line across there. So, I'm going to be using some sanding sticks of various different thicknesses and grits, which I've worked my way down through them to a finer polishing. So I can get rid of, I can actually feel a ridge across there as well. I'm using a thin one that I can use a very thin end to get into some of the finer details. These have obviously got a bit of give to them as well. So I can use it to go around rather than just going straight across and flattening off all the edges. So starting off with a thicker one. And keeping everything moving so I'm not going to end up with flat spots except where I want flat spots on the flat edges but it's all got that little bit of curve to it so making sure I'm just doing this bit not right at the edges where I don't really want it to be done already I can't feel that ridge there anymore that I was feeling but this is the coarser of all of them so although that's now got rid of you should be able to see some rough marks on there as well so what we do is we go down to the next finer Uh, 
and then the next finer. Obviously on all of it, but I'm just doing this to give you some indication of what's going on. And they're very fine. So now you can really not see or certainly not feel the ridge there at all. And then we've got the blue side of this is a, a very, very fine grit, more of polishing than sanding. That will get it down to almost nothing. And then the white side is actually virtually no friction at all, it's just polishing. So hopefully this will bring it back up to the white shiny. As shiny as makes no odds. So there's still a very slightly visible line there, but not nearly what it was. I actually can't feel it at all. So once I get a level of primer over there, that should be as invisible as it gets so it's just one piece of plastic which is what I'm aiming for I think this is the only one that's really got a visible seam line on it the rest of it being big fairing panels that go on the edges and the sides aren't too bad so I'm going to spend a bit of time getting this as clean as I can and uh, then I'll get the last bit put onto it uh, I'm not going to be painting it immediately because there are some other bits that need to be the same uh, red so I don't want to I've got the red mixed up, but uh, no, the red I'm using the normal, the same I did on the other one, a Ferrari red. I've got the primer mixed up, which is what gives me the, the right colour. So I'm going to make sure I get everything ready and then prime it all in one hit and then get all the, the red down in one hit and then do the other highlighting. This one's actually got some interesting masking to be done on it. Uh, so although it says to put it on, I'm not going to be putting it on quite yet. I'm going to get all the masking done, get all the painting done, and then get it all assembled. So uh, I'd say I won't be showing you this one painted, but once it's sanded down, I'll probably give you a quick look at that first, and then we'll get on with some painting of the rest of it. So see you in a moment. Okay, that's all the pieces for this cut off the sprue and sanded down. Uh, these bits, I'm happy with these are black mark in there but I'm going to be priming this first anyway I couldn't get that down without getting rid of the shape completely so I've got rid of the seam lines from down there happy with that uh, this pile of stuff I need to prime in black and although these are white bits they're actually going to be done in black on this red version so all of that I need to prime in black these ones uh, this is going to be mainly a, the Italian red as are they these are going to be a different type of red but still a red for the seat it goes together much like that so I'm going to be priming all of this in my mixed up grey primer uh, then I'll be priming all of those in black and then I can get the red on this then I can get the masking done on the bits that need masking and redo them again so I uh, just thought I'd show you the bits ready to go uh, I'm going to get these out of the way get these primed first then change to the darker colour to get those primed in black and then clean up the airbrush again uh, once this is dry of the primer which doesn't take very long using the decent primer uh, get that in the red which hopefully will come out exactly the same as that red so uh, right see you in a bit that's everything primed and the red painted the uh, what we got the side panels and the main um, fuel tank cover uh, done in the uh, Ferrari red with the black priming uh, this is normal flat red in for the seat which is a slightly different shade it does look a little bit different so I'm happy with that uh, the other bits I've done in black priming's not come out very well on that for some reason but I'm not too concerned as I say it was only priming I'll see how it goes with the, the colour over the top which on that one's going to be light gunmetal 
Uh, the others, uh, mostly NATO, all the, the black bits, a uh, bit of chrome in on a, a couple of bits like the fuel cap cover there. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get that done and then I'll see about uh, masking up the the fuel tank cover and the seat, which have got some black bits to go over the top. Uh, so I'm going to see about getting the NATO bits done and the other colours and then show you some masking. So won't be long. And there we have it. That's all the uh, NATO stuff and light greys and everything. I need to do the detail work on it. I need to do the outside of this in chrome and a couple of chrome highlights and bits on the, the bolts and screws on there. Uh, but the most interesting bit that I've got to do so far is the masking on the fuel tank here. Now, according to the instructions, let me show you the instructions. There we go. Uh, right, I've got, and I'm doing this B section, uh, the masking tape available separately, but the masking sticker, uh, A and B. Now this is the masking sticker, which isn't cut in any way, it's just one sheet of basically masking tape with a, a picture printed on it. Uh, so, according to this, I need A and B, which are the two on the outside. Uh, C and D seem to be the ones that you use if you're doing the other colour scheme. Uh, so basically if I get it the same way around as the picture I might show you the picture as well. Uh, I need this lighter grey piece here is the masking sticker the white bit is the masking tape and the black bit is where I need to paint. So these masking stickers I need to cut off which I'm going to be doing with a knife. So I'll be cutting along all of these lines along here to get that a, which goes the other side, so B is this one, which goes here, uh, looking like it goes basically, I don't know if it actually conforms to any of these panels of grooves, it's hard to make out in the picture, uh, making sure it's that way round, yes, seems to be that way round, so that basically goes across here, up and along that side. I'll be able to see better once I cut it out. I'm going to try and cut it through, so I'm cutting through the masking pa backing paper as well. Uh, so we can see what we're doing. As I don't need the others, I'm going to have a little practice on one of those just to see how close I can get. Obviously I need to do it in one swipe, so yeah, that's sharp enough to go through all of the paper there. And I'm following the line quite clearly, so I'm going to cut these off off camera and then see how they're going to stick on and then obviously get some more masking tape over the top and then I expect I'll give you a quick update on it before I paint it. Alright, that's those two bits cut off. Now, looking at them, how they're going to go, the indentation there obviously needs to go around that blob and that makes that centre point over the middle there and the other one the same is obviously going to go over the top of it so it's not a problem. The cut there is from that shaped edge which means that flows up that way comes across the corner here but that does need to go to there so if we work it back the other way as well if we start that there that will come along this way that actually comes along top side there and then everything else lines up about there so I think I need to start at the back with that straight edge so I'm going to peel the backing off here and as this is basically Tamiya masking tape it gives me a bit of freedom it's not overly sticky it's all right to re to peel it and unpeel it a little bit i haven't gloss coated this red yet as i want to gloss all of it together right that gives me that there that bit comes across here Looking like 
it's not lining up quite right so let me get those bits in the right place I think that's what these attach points are basically it says get them in the right places and everything else will sort of follow so let's see if they're right I'll get that in the right place there must be a bit lower than that all right there that's right there this bit's not right so where's my tweezers when I need them let's get this peel back up I think that needs to go up a little higher the trouble with only having two-dimensional pictures of a three-dimensional object I can't really tell where the curves in that are So that takes this right down to the edge, which is possible from that picture. I can't really cl clearly see. Just get that up. Last bit, there we go. Right. So let's put that down. And then see if we can get that to line up. Yeah, that goes along that edge piece, okay. Okay, I'm quite happy with that then. That's gone down quite well. Except for this middle bit, I'll see how the other side matches up on that, but yeah, I'll get the other side done and then get some more masking over the top bit and then get the back sprayed. Okay, that's the uh, masking done on there. Pretty happy with the way it's worked out. The inside bit edges didn't actually matter. It's just the outside that's the important bit. So I need to get all of this sprayed in black, which will go over the red quite well. Not a problem with that. Uh, then uh, gloss coat, which I'm gonna do on the panels as well. Get them all as shiny as I can. Uh, I'll do a light gloss coat over the NATO bits. This one, for instance, has to go. Where are we? In there. Like that. It's actually screwed in with two screws. But I obviously want the panels shinier than the, the outside, so I need to do a few coats of gloss coat on that first. And that'll be all the panels done. Uh, then, as a case of assembling it, most of it's screwed together actually on this one. So, uh, yeah, I'll get it all finished in the painting and put together, see you in a bit. Okay, the masking worked quite well. Nice sharp lines on there. I uh, do need to give it a, a gloss coat. That one's gonna be very shiny, and these just more for protection than anything else, but again, happy with how they come out. Uh, right, so I need to gloss everything. I say some more than others. Uh, what else have I got to show? I've got the, I've done the, the highlights of the gunmetal and the chrome on the extra bits, which again need a bit of gloss coat. So the, the big panels obviously need to be very shiny, so I need to do more on those. So I'll get them all glossed up and then start putting it all together. Right, what's new since last time? Uh, everything's been gloss coated. I've put a couple of bits together. I've put the fuel cap cover on top of there. Uh, I've put a couple of these bits together that are on the side at the back. I've done a decal onto the back, uh, what they call it, the seat cowl. Uh, and I've got some screws ready. So uh, I need to attach a couple of bits onto the bike itself. So let's move everything back out of the way. I need one screw for this. And I need the bike which is back here. Right, let's uh, see. The bit I'm attaching is the main everything, which just goes on and locates in there, and one screw goes through that hole there and holds that in place. It doesn't say anything about gluing or not gluing the rest of it together, so 
I'm not going to glue it together because I don't think I need to. So let's get that screw in there. There we go, that's that located, I think. No, nope. that feels better. Yeah, that holds that in there securely enough without having to worry about any glue on there. Uh, right, then the cowling piece goes over the back. We've got uh, four screws there that hold that in place on there. And then the two outside bits uh, get screwed on through, oh, through the other bit down there somewhere. There we go, that's this side. That's where that other screw hole comes into play. And that goes over there like that. Which you can just about see on there. Obviously on both sides. So I'll get that screwed in place and then uh, get ready with the next bit. All right, one thing to note when putting these side fairings on is this little clip here needs to locate into the little hook piece here. And you need to do that before everything else gets lined up. So it's tricky to do anyway, but it's even trickier to try and do on camera. Basically, I'm getting that hooked in place while making sure everything else is in about the right place. It's quite a tight fit because obviously it's not meant to come off again once it's on there. So that's about there. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's it. So that's that there. The front obviously just clips in about there then we've got one screw through here and then the other bit okay it's through the back and another screw through there to hold that all in place so i'll get that done a little bit of glue on the end here just to hold that end down the other end uh then we're pretty much ready for the seat which needs a decal or two on it so i'll show you what i'm doing with that okay that's all the fairing put on happy with that nice it does match quite well with the front uh, now the seat the seat is in a slightly different red to the normal bit anyway but it still needs decals now these are obviously white going over black so I'm hoping that they're thick enough to work but following the instructions that's exactly what it says to do now I'm trying to tell from the picture here just how far that will fit on it does look like it's going to be touching the edge of the black piece and covering the black not touching the red so I've uh, soaked this in water and hopefully that will enable me to move it in a second being quite a big piece I don't the numbers obviously move in there so that's a good sign let's get rid of that don't need that anymore yeah nice nice movement there right so I'm going to be moving this up here and then with the edges of the tweezers just going to work it off of the paper and onto the piece looks like it's a lovely thick decal there so that should cover up the black quite nicely yeah that's going to do it so just need to get that into the right place I'm actually going to grab a brush and some micro set to give me a bit more scope to slide it that should do it 
being a curved surface as well I do want to make sure I get it sitting round the curve and that curve does seem to match that quite well so I'm going to play with this off camera a little bit and just gently tease it into the right place then when that's dry I'll do the same on the other side but that is definitely coming off quite well so see you in a moment okay that's both sides done and I've put some uh, microsol on afterwards just to help it curve into the bit there that's why it's got a little bit wrinkly now so I'll leave that to dry once that's dried down that should be fine uh, then it's just a simple matter of putting that onto the, the back of the bike and then the other half of the seat sits down over the end of it like that and that will be that completed so uh, once that's dry I'll get it back up I'll put it on there and then that should be the end of this part of the video so hopefully I'll have a you know, a, another stage of bike ready to show you so see you in a moment and there we go that's this part completed I'll give you a quick spin round of it uh, the stripe on there I'm going to give another coat of microsol just to bed it in there properly but I also need to get some other decals on the rest of it as well so I'm not overly concerned as yet the front is looking like the front of a bike let's bring the mic around a little bit these are not quite holding in I'm not sure if they're going to need a little bit of glue just to hold them in finally but everything else looking good it's certainly coming to be a bike and it's certainly getting quite big it's um yeah quite substantial so all in all I'm happy with it so far thanks for watching as ever uh, there's one more section to come with the handlebars and the front windscreen and then this build will be completed so I'll uh, get on with that and see you soon thanks for watching